welcome to Life and Liberty Radio with David Householder. I'm Josh Jose, and together you and I are taking another step toward freedom, both spiritual and political. So get comfortable, breathe in, and ignite your imagination. Envision a society that is spiritually deep and truly free. It's easy if you try. One summer, my family toured Boston on the historic Freedom Trail, and I'm still learning from an unexpected lesson at the Old North Church. I was probably seven or eight years old, and we were on our annual pilgrimage to Massachusetts to visit family we had out there. If you've listened to my podcast in the past, my first podcast here at Life and Liberty was another story about a summer I had at Massachusetts. It's called Where is God in the Muck? And I encourage you to listen to that one as well. But this summer was much earlier in my life than that. I was probably, like I said, I was probably about seven or eight years old. And we decided, you know, our family lived another another part of Massachusetts, but we added on this trip to Boston because of all the historic sites having to do with the American Revolution that we wanted to see in Boston. And, of course, um, the, so there was the Freedom Trail that that we wanted to experience because it was this walking tour of Boston that's still there. You can, there's a website for it and everything for the freedom trail in Boston. And you can go on the, on this walking tour of the city and see all these different historic sites in the city. Well, one of the sites on the tour was the old North church. And by the time we got to the old North church, I, I had kind of grown a bit bored. It was a long journey, a long trail So after all this walking, and I'm not a big history person anyway, I think my brother enjoyed it a bit more than I did because he's more into history than I am. But but I was tired. I was bored. And so I started trying to have a little fun with it. And so I'd ask my mom what was next, and she'd tell me something about it. And then I'd get in like a tour guide voice, and I'd say, and next on our tour we have the Old North Church or something. And I'd say something clever about it. Well, we got to the Old North Church, and I asked my mom, well, oh, what's next? And so I found out it's the Old North Church, and she pointed it out. And so I ran up to the doorway, and I, I barred the door with my arms, braced my arms in the door, and acted like the church was closed. And my family came up, and I said, I'm sorry, the church is closed. You can't come in today. The church is closed. Well, you know, I'm just being silly. I'm I'm bored. I'm just trying to make a little fun here, just trying to have a good time with this. And so I'm just being silly. Um, really meant nothing by it. My mom and my brother knew I meant nothing by it. They just ducked under my arm and went on into the church because obviously it was not actually closed. So they went on in. When my dad came up and I was barring the door and saying, I'm sorry, sir, the church is closed. You can't come in right now. The church is closed. And I was even more adamant this time because my mother and my brother had slipped past me. And so I was even more adamant that, no, I'm sorry, the church is closed. But my dad was equally adamant. And he came up to me and he said, no. He said, the church is never closed. He said, God's welcome is for everyone. So you will stand aside and you will let me in because the church is not closed. And of course I stood aside and I let my dad in and I was, I was stunned. I was absolutely stunned. Obviously, you know, I was just trying to be silly. And so I was, I was stunned in the fact that, that he took my silliness so seriously. But I was also stunned by the seriousness with which he treated the church. My family didn't start going to church until I was somewhere, until after I started school We never went to church when I was a little kid, but when I got a little bit older, my mom said, we're going to go to church. And so we started going to church when I was probably somewhere in elementary school. My dad helped us pick out the church, but he didn't come with us very often. Most often when we went to church, it was just my mom and my brother and I, and sometimes it was just my mom and I. But so this was at a time in my life where my dad was kind of kept the church at arm's length and he didn't come with us. And so I had a sense that you know, I felt like it probably didn't, I mean, why would it matter to him is what I wondered. Why would it matter to him so much of whether or not the church is open or closed? Because he didn't really come with us very much. And so I didn't know, I just didn't know how much he cared. 
And it struck me when he got in my face like that and said, no, the church is not closed. God's welcome is for everyone. It really stuck with me to see that here was someone who was kind of on the fringe of church, kind of outside of church life, but cared very, very deeply about God's welcome, about the importance of knowing that church was open and that church was open to him and that I would stand aside because he knew the church was open for him. And it was surprising to me how much he cared about the state of the church, whether the church was open or closed. He cared much more than I ever realized. In my life, I've been, a, you know, I've been, I'm married, right now I'm married to a pastor and I am also a trained church worker. And so in many ways, I've come to be very much on the inside of church life. And I think I, I went through a phase where I thought, well, church is good. We should all be here. It's good for everyone. And if you're not here, you're missing out. And I think I felt like, you know, you really ought to be here. But what I've come to see more over time is that there are barriers that we put up in church, that there are, um, there are times when we do, when we bar the doors. And there are times in which we communicate unwelcome or we fail or we fail to communicate welcome even if we intend welcome we fail to communicate that and sometimes we unwittingly bar doors by playing around by just playing church sometimes we just play at our spiritual lives and we don't realize all the consequences of our behavior and how and what that's communicating to somebody else who's outside the church. And so that's become more important to me to think about the welcome that we're giving and whether or not we're giving a welcome and thinking about the people who are outside. And I know that my dad, his experience with, you know, his, his situation of, caring more than I realized about the state of the church, that that's not necessarily representative of everyone outside the church. There are some people that are outside the church and happy to be outside of the church. But there are so many people, so many people, and more and more people that I meet that are outside of the church because of wounds, because of ways that they've been hurt by the church or by people in the church. And they love Jesus very much. They love Christ so very much, but they've been hurt and it's hard. The welcome is not there or they've been outright excluded. And so my heart has been opened to those people to see the ways in which we fail to extend a welcome. And so I want to invite us to think about that, to think about the ways that, that we fail to welcome or that we inadvertently communicate unwelcome, the ways in which we might bar doors for people to come. Because the reality is, whether we're inside or outside of traditional church structures, we're on this spiritual trail together. So let us not just play church, but with everything that we say and do, let us affirm God's welcome to one another so that each of us may know true freedom through the love of God in Christ Jesus. Well, that's all for today on Life and Liberty Radio. Thanks so much for sharing this part of your spiritual journey with me. Now, the views on this program are not necessarily those of my advertisers, sponsors, places I work or do business with. They're purely my own, but I'm sharing them with you, so share your ideas with me. Write me on Twitter at Liberty House, L-I-B-E-R-T-Y-H-O-U-S, no E. Until next time, let's continue dreaming and working for a free and spiritually grounded society.